Hey everyone, this is Duke from Gas Mask Bunker, and today I'm not exactly going to be doing a review, but I thought I'd like to show off a bit of something for you guys that I tried to do on a stream with weapons and stuff, but uh, my camera quality was a bit stymied, so I figure I'd better do the proper way here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the internals of the improved powered air purifying respirator. But before I get into that, a little bit more on the history of these that I did not cover as well as the previous IPAP review. So these were originally designed by Micronel or Safety Tech who originally designed the C420. The IPAPR project stemmed from development in designing a 40mm SCBA regulator to use with the M45 and XM53 chemical biological masks for US SOCOM. Uh, they had ultimately realized that in order to create a hybrid SCBA setup, that instead of using a pneumatic Y splitter that effectively cuts off the air uh, and routes the, the blower air from the C420 uh, into the mask, and then when the SCBA is turned on, it cuts it off, instead of having a complicated system like that, what they should do is design an entirely new blower unit, which combines all the features of the C420 with a 40 millimeter SCBA regulator that can simply strap onto the SCBA bottle and integrate with it. And that is basically what the iPapper was. It was effectively taking that pneumatic Y splitter, which could either uh, have air going from the SCBA or the C420 mounted on the tank, uh, and they basically crammed it all into one unit. However, the design was not really up to US SOCOM standards. I know that several companies managed to land an IPAP or contract. Micronel slash Safety Tech was the first, but the next per, uh, company to receive a contract was Draeger, uh, and then ultimately Avon was adopted as well. And Avon would uh, go on to tr attempt to market the IPAPR as the ST Papper for law enforcement, but it wasn't exactly successful there. And they very well, very well may have been selling off unused examples that were rejected from US SOCOM trials. Uh, the IPAPR has been seen in service with US SOCOM as late as 2011. I am unsure if they are still using them, but if I were to make a acute guess until further evidence is provided, they have more or less replaced it by this point with the Avon MP Papper and CS Papper units, which are obviously kind of Avon's response to, okay, we have this giant brick that weighs three pounds before it even has the filters on it, and we want to be able to streamline this, and so they basically made a flexible rubber spine that you screw the filters and an Avon Easy Air onto. I'm sure you can all look into what an MP Papper is. It's on Avon's website. But that's not what you came here to see, and I've rambled on as far as I uh, already should have been by now, but let's get into the actual disassembly. So, first step, uh, pretty much a no-brainer. If you have canisters, unscrew them. Cap them for later if they're still serviceable, but obviously if you're actually using this for a CB threat, uh, you would probably just dispose of these in the proper way. Uh, and um, most of you don't probably don't know about the caps that most blowers use. Uh, these are the green ones, but they most uh, blower units, which have 40 millimeter ports, use cap lug size 17S. And most of the ones you're going to find are the red ones, but you can find these in bulk for pretty cheap on eBay. So in case you needed a cheap supply of 40 millimeter plugs, that's what you got to look out for. Anyways, let me cap off the other filter here. Not that I need to, because both of these filters are expired anyways, but it's best to show it off just for the sake of showing it off, I suppose. Then plug the blower. You don't want any dust and stuff getting into there, but uh, I'm going to be disassembling it anyways, so even if there was, uh, I could just remove it that way. Next, remove the outer cover, uh, assuming that you have one on, which I'm pretty sure you should, assuming you have the unit, because the unit does not have any integratedly molded loops or any sort of accommodations to attach it to the blower unit or to the SCBA tank on its own. And there's a couple different types of these um, blower pouches for the IPAPR. This one is one of the Avon produced ones, I believe. Uh, I, I could be wrong on that, but I don't really know a manufacturer on the specific cover. Most of the ones that you're going to see in photographs are the MSA Paraclete ones, which I believe were experimental, but they um, sort of did a weird overlap where it just kind of folded over. There was like two flaps that folded and interlaced between these filter ports. Uh, I can't, I'll probably show it on screen, so I, I can't, I don't spend five minutes describing it. But nevertheless, let's get this out of the pouch here. So it's a bit tricky. What you want to do is kind of get your fingers underneath both of the, the canister port holes, and you kind of just pull on the bottom without bumping the camera, of course, and slide the unit off. And you kind of got to do it one at a time. So it'll once you get one free, it'll hang up on the next, but once you get those two free, and I'm not showing it on camera very well, but you get the idea. You know what? Let's move these plugs. These are getting in the way. So, with that out of the way, with much wrestling, the cover can finally come off. 
Uh, of course, you might have to do it a third time because, you know, it has two holes and you've passed over one port and it may just get hung up on the next. So that is the cover removed and now you can see the bare unit itself. You can see, once again, Avon iPapper single speed. There is a three speed version which Moulage is in possession of. I do not have it with me at this point so I cannot show you but maybe in a future review. And you can see the serial number on this particular example as well as a part number much like the C420s would have, which would identify which variant it is in a catalog. You can see the upper portion of the unit with the uh, the remote cable, which you would simply twist to the left. It's a standard Klansman connector, I believe. It's 7-pin, so any Klansman radio port, if you've ever handled one, is pretty similar to this. And then the hose, which you know, it's a 40 millimeter hose, it unthreads, but the other thing is this long tube, which I mentioned in the previous review, called it a, a tube cannula or whatever. This is actually part of the SCBA regulator. Um, this The Avon ones, as far as I know, are the only blowers that have this. The ones made by Micronel and Draeger, I believe, do not have this because the Micronel uh, iPappers, excuse me, they're, they're really safety tech. Um, the safety tech SCBAG, which is their designation for the iPapper, they have their own regulator, which does not need this tube, and you can see it in the patent images here. Uh, where it's uh, basically a much larger blower than the one, or larger regular that th than the one Avon used, but um, ultimately Avon's was more compact with the caveat that they stuck that long tube up the hose for whatever reason. But anyways, uh, the other thing that you'll want to check into before cracking this baby open is remove both battery caps and assure that there is no batteries in there. Uh, I assume none of you want to get shocked when you're opening this thing up, but once that's aside, you're going to want to start from the bottom, uh, and you have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these little metal clips holding this thing together. There's no hidden screws like the C420. Just bust these little clips off and it comes completely undone. So I will attempt to show how to do that. And the best tool I found to use this is a just, just a basic Swiss uh, Army knife uh, screwdriver. So you'll want to get that underneath the tab. Again, do it from the back. If you do it from the top here, uh, it won't work because the tabs are a bit different. Because if you look closely at these... You can see that there's one side here that you can get a screwdriver under while the other is just a hook. You're going to want to hook those onto the um, the edge facing the longer portion. And luckily there's little um, slots that will definitely identify where these will go. There's not, you can't slide these around or anything. So a bit of a curious feature why they made it just all one surface. But, you know, it is what it is. So that first one off, let's get the rest of these. And I've Again, I did this on stream with weapons and stuff, but unfortunately uh, StreamYard was doing stuff to my camera that day, so maybe next stream. I know we have another stream coming up soon, so maybe then you'll have to forgive the, uh, the battery cap rattling around. And this is pretty simple stuff. And once we get to the inside, oh boy, this thing is a nightmare, an utter abomination of a blower if ever there was one. So we have, let's see, we have about four more clips to go, and then I can basically show you everything that you kind of were coming here for to see from the thumbnail. Just doing all this off camera as I sit awkwardly off to the side. Let me scooch in a little bit more, get my legs on camera. And one more to go. All right, and that is the last clip off of the blower. So let's take a look at what's inside the eye papper, shall we? There is no gasket on the cover itself. There's just bare plastic and plastic, which is part of the reason I assume that these never received NIOSH approval. So that's another reason why these things flopped, is that NIOSH pretty much refused to approve these for whatever reason. And I kind of not hard to see why, seeing this, this pile of garbage that you're looking at here. But let me explain what all this is. So to start off with, we have the motor blower, which is the standard motor blower from the C420. This is the one main component that they recycled from the previous uh, PAPR. Uh, and that is kind of um, uh, hose clamped to a piece of what looks like pool hose. It's just plastic hose. It's not rubber or flexible or anything. And it's just, you know, clamped onto this Y splitter that I mentioned. And this would have been originally used on its own with a C420 with a C420 being attached to this end. Obviously, there's a, a blower here from a C420. So this is where it would have originally gone while this system is by itself. And then you have this little pneumatic actuator here, which when down here, you have an SCBA plugged in and you have the SCBA turned on, that pressure coming into here is gonna go through this little tube up into this piston and it's going to push this little lever here. And what that's doing inside the actual unit itself, if I can get the camera to see that, hopefully you can 
sort of see it moving there, but there is a little flap which basically moves out of the way from the SCBA portion and covers the blower so that no air from the blower is going into the mask, but the SCBA is taking over. And that's how that works, but unfortunately the Avon ones just don't really work because of the addition of this very odd uh, pressure tube that's inside of the main breathing tube. So that's the main downfall with the Avon ones. The Micronel and the presumably the Draeger ones did not have this feature. It's literally just because of the, the Avon uh, compact demand valve that's in here which is not the same as the ones for the uh, the ST53. The ST53 ones do not have a long tapeworm going into the mask, fortunately. Um, other than that, you can see other features throughout the background here. There is the um, the variable switch that used, used to power on the blower, and uh, on some models it would have been a three-speed, but this one is a single speed. And as, obviously, as you can see, they sort of crossed out the additional two speeds, so it just it's just a single speed. Kind of weird to see a rotary switch single speed, but you know, it is what it is. Then you have the remote cable connection up there leading to the battery tube, and then you have wires going down here to the motor blower. And I bet you some of you are wondering what this piece of uh, 3M adhesive tape is on here, or this, this foam double-sided tape. And that is literally there as a buffer cushion for this boss on the interior face of the lid, and that's literally just there to stabilize the, uh, the, the motor blower, make sure it doesn't, you know, jank itself out of alignment and there is a couple more um accommodations there's a couple threaded holes down in there and what those are originally for is those were for the uh the scba regulator that micronel originally designed for us socom uh, and then when avon got a hold of the design they were just eager to put the compact demand valve in there so they didn't really need that feature but that aside it is a functional unit uh, again, it's, these don't have NIOSH approval. These would work, but, you know, if you're willing to want to use this on the job, it is not approved as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong on that, and I will probably do a little bit of research before I upload this video and update if or not if they didn't or did not. But um, that's really all there is to see on here. There is nothing really on the other side of the ports. Those are just bare ports that go through there. Uh, so you can entirely, you can even see the motor there uh, through that one. And there's, you can see some of the hose through there. So that's really all there is to the eye papper. It's just a Pandora's box of blower and SCBA parts that US SOCOM put in a pentagram and they did an incantation and it all assembled itself under the glory of Satan. So that's what we're have, we have to work with here. And really the only other thing that I have to mention is this, this mystery plug on the back cover. I'm not entirely sure what this was for. Perhaps for some sort of pressure testing or something, I really don't know. And there's also two more stabilizer pads that would have really been there to stabilize a motor blower, but it's there's nothing there. So just the entire layout of this thing and what it had planned for is a mystery to me, and there's very little information about the development of the iPapper, unfortunately. Just the mention that Micronel or Safety Tech designed it and they uh, US SOCOM tested it and they hated it. So that's the end of that story. That's all she wrote. So, uh, I might as well show off the reassembly of this unit, which is pretty much, obviously, a reverse of what I did to disassemble it, but I'll be a little bit simpler since there's no screwdriver involved. So, just reposition the back cover on. Sometimes it gets stuck, so definitely be sure to check. So, obviously, as you can see here, it's a little bit lifted here. What you're going to want to do, just push on one side, then it pops right into place. So, make sure you've done that before you start installing the clips, or else you're going to have to undo all of them again, and you're not going to be able to get this thing back together unless you do that. So, starting, um, as I said, you're going to want to take this uh, hooked portion here that does not have the lifting tab on it, and you're going to want to find that first uh, little accommodation for it. it. Is first one right here is right behind the blower switch to the right, and what you'll do, we just hold it down, Press it till it snaps into place. That's all you need to do. And you, obviously you do that for all the rest of these little clips, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but you know, it, I, I'll take this over the C420 and it's multiple wax filled screws. So it's a bit better than that, but they could have at least put a gasket in the damn thing. So, and it does not appear that there is a snap holder there or clip holder. Uh, so we got more on this side, definitely three on each long horizontal plane of this blower. So I will go ahead and do that. It's very simple. There's really no effort to it at all. You don't have to push the blow the, the lid down or anything. They just give a little bit of pressure and it pops right into place. Very nice design. I like it. And then we have three more to go up here. Uh, 
I suppose I could show off how to remove the hose cover, but that's pretty non-intuitive itself. But uh, uh, there is one little interesting feature about the hose cover that is uh, that, that's worth showing off, or rather the hose itself. So, to undo the hose cover, really just undo the remote cable. It's held on with Velcro. And you have a strip here of Velcro, which is wrapped around the end of the hose itself. And undoing that, you can just tuck the remote cable underneath here and get that out of the way for the time being. And then you undo the other end. Now, in a lot of photos of the uh, the eye papper, a lot of them will not have this remote ho this uh, hose cover here. And I should note that this is not fireproof as far as I'm aware. It could be. It could may not be. I'm not entirely sure because there's no description of this really out there as far as I've seen. It is made of a very durable ripstop material, so maybe it could be fire resistant. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't see why it couldn't be, but I just don't have evidence to prove otherwise. I'm not going to take it all the way off just for the sake of making this video simpler because I've rambled enough as it is. But what's amusing here is the way they re retained the remote cable is they've taken a standard C420 remote cable, they've spiraled it around the existing shorter hose, and then they've kind of zip-tied it in place. You know, it works, but it's just kind of silly to see that, you know? So I will attempt to get the rest of this hose back on. Hose cover, that is. Uh, have I already pulled this through? Ah, uh, I probably should have pulled it all the way off, because it's already doing this. It's doing the thing that I hoped it wouldn't, but, you know. That's just life. So undoing... Uh, you can also see a part number underneath there. There's a little part number tag if any, any of you want to look into it, but I haven't really found too much, but or I haven't really looked into it, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of making this video on a whim, you know? Just be spontaneous like that. And now, without further ado, get the rest of it on. Please hold your excitement. And, uh... That's really all there is to it. It just it's it's a sleeve with Velcro at each end that you kind of loop into itself. It's not really didn't really need to show that off, but in case anyone couldn't figure it out, there well then there it is. Get that right position there. Now let's put the hose back on because that's the important thing here. Hmm. Let's see. So ideally. You wouldn't want to drop the blower, ideally, but ideally, you'd want the uh, the uh, the 90 degree swivel to be facing towards whatever side you have the canister port on the mask. And I'm just now noticing that there is a clip that I didn't install somewhere, so let me get that really quick before I continue with this. Right there. I forget. There we go. So to install the hose on the blower, again, it's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure I showed this off in my iPapper review. But you just kind of thread that big old SCBA tapeworm down in there. Kind of rattle the hose around until it kind of shoves home. And uh, and again, you probably will want, again, will want that 90 degree swivel to face the side that, you, that your mask has the canister port on. So I have it positioned on this side, on the left, like most people, to have the right hand free. However, I'm going to need to reposition that uh, remote cable, so once I get this sorted down, I will do that. And it threads on righty-tighty, as always, if I can get the threads to catch. And I think it's going. There we go. So, now that that's in place, I will reposition the, the remote cable to over here, and align the little holes on the actual connector here with the pins. Again, if the camera would like to focus on that. There we go. So once the pins are aligned, push it down and rotate until it clicks. That's as simple as that. Get that hose cover down on there. And now we can reposition the blower uh, cover. So with this one, and again, I, I'm eventually going to get one of the Paraclete ones from Retro Respirators. But uh, today I have the, just this one to show off. It's a bit tricky, once, but once you get it on, it pretty much just kind of slides smoothly, aside from the canister ports, of course. So you'll obviously start at the bottom with this model, kind of rotate it and tug at it in various spots until it wants to cooperate. Misinterpret that or euphemize that how you will. Oh boy, let me start from the battery end, actually. There we go, that's going to be much better. Now, 
just kind of push it over the edge until it until it dies, I guess. It's a bit fiddly, folks, if you haven't already noticed. There we go. All right, we are up to the first canister stem, so we will lift the edge up and slide it on over. And now that it's caught on the second canister stem, oh, it's already started to do it for me, so just continue pulling. And then just press it all the way down, make sure it's aligned, kind of rotate it into position. And then if you have a battery, go ahead and install it. I'm not going to, but you will get the idea how it goes in. It's a battery tube. It's not very complicated. So now, uh, obviously on these little D-rings here, this is where you would attach the straps to it, uh, affix the blower to the SCBA bottle. But I don't have those right now. I do have the blower straps. I'm just not getting them on because I do not have a SCBA unit to attach to this. But hopefully, eventually, I will get one. So uh, the only other thing is to attach these two little Velcro straps. And put the canisters back on because you definitely want to do that. Ideally, you'd want new canisters, though, if you're going to be using this. But, you know, if you're just using it for little displays or whatever, then this works just as well. No reason that expired canisters can't work for display. And uh, if anyone is curious what these filters are, these are Avon GPCF50 conformal canisters. These are the standard conformal canisters that come issued with the M53 and the M50, FM54 masks. However, there are multiple other conformal canisters that are capable of being used with the uh, IPAPR. And you could also use standard 40 millimeter threaded canisters, both NATO and GOST with this unit, assuming you have one. However, I don't recommend this unit very much because it is a very outdated design. It's very bulky, like legit. Uh, it weighs three pounds without any filters or batteries in it, or even the hose. The C420 is like 1.5 pounds. So take that into consideration. Just kind of an interesting footnote on the development of US SOCOM chemical biological capabilities. So that's all there is to see. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, as always, leave them in the comments below. I'm Duke from Gas Mask Bunker, and I will see you all later.